Bobby Shoemaker, Andrew Calvano. It's Tournament Talk on the Tournament Edge for Saturday, December 17th. We're going to go down to Hollandale Beach, Florida. Andrew, Gulfstream Park, race eight. It's $100,000 El Prado Stakes going seven and a half furlongs on the turf for three-year-olds and up. It's a field of eight. And our friend, heart to heart, the one horse, is your six to five morning line favorite. It's Brian Lynch. It's Julian Leperu. I have a lot of respect for this horse, Andrew, when it comes to the class that this horse has, the races in which this horse has run in as of late, and has been competitive and been winning in quite a few of them as well. But at the end of the day, for me, I don't trust this horse. And I'm not sure seven and a half furlongs is really what this horse wants to do. I think this horse needs a lead, needs a lone lead. And not to say I don't think this horse is capable of getting a lead by himself, I just don't trust this horse at six to five at the seven and a half furlong distance. I'm going to play against your thoughts on heart to heart, your thoughts on this horse being the morning line favorite. Yeah, I actually have no problems with this one being the uh, the favorite here. And, and just to get into it, this is going to be my top selection at six to five. I think that's good value in a spot like this. I think this one's just head and shoulders uh, above the rest of the field here. And we look at the, the two races as of late in this fall after a long layoff after the Shoemaker Mile. Uh, a yielding turf course in the Knickerbocker, uh, wins with ease and a hand ride. Artie Schiller, a good turf course, doesn't really run as well as you'd expect there and, and, and weak and late. Had to come out from the outside, and I think that was very difficult for her. But I think with the one post here, she's going to be in command of the lead. I see some other speed as well, but I think this one, nonetheless, is just quicker. Nice workout, the four furlongs, the 47 flat last time out. The thing with the seven furlong distance, Bobby, I agree with you, at a – at a park like at a, at a track like Belmont Park, you know, I, I think this one would not like the seven furlong distance whatsoever. But I think Gulfstream has such an intricate seven and a half furlong race where I mean it's essentially a mile because you immediately go into that first turn, so you get the feeling of it being a two turn race. Um, so I think that's one going to help this one a little bit more. And this one is two for two over the course here. I think the the backup in distance that extra half furlong may help her out. Uh, considering the other horses that may be coming down if she does get tired here. At 6-5, to five, I would like to see myself in a spot where I can just, you know, uh, stay tight and, and have the winner and move on in this race. If this one should get bet down below, I do like the 7 reporting start of price, and we'll break that down for now. But at 6-5, to five, I'm going to be on number one heart-to-heart. Heart. As far as the pace is concerned, uh, everybody's going to agree that heart-to-heart's either going to be on the lead by herself or certainly is going to be in the lead with somebody else with her. My question is, who do you think is going to go with heart to heart early, if anyone, or at least attempt to do so? Got it, uh, and I thought uh, number three, Song Sensational, would, would show some more uh, speed off the layoff. If we look back, the last start was pinched very, very tightly there. So that's why you kind of see the mishap in the running lines. This one has a lot of early speed, especially off the layoff. This one's going to need to show it here. Um, the four little Balter has some speed, but none, none to the, no. the contention of uh, number three or uh, number one heart to heart. Uh, go around intrigued me, but I think this one is going to sit back to Castellano. Castellano is going to make that one run uh, move that it does. A horse that intrigued me, uh, and I literally wasn't sure what this one was going to do. Uh, security risk, second off the layoff. This one showed speed in this one's last start, but the way I watched that race, this one was in hand the whole time, and I think it was an example that we just spoke about in that Tampa Bay race where. This may have just been the best horse in the field, and they said, come play, catch me if you can, because this is the best horse, and nobody's catching us regardless. This one has shown the ability to rate in the past, so I'm going to be very intrigued as to what number two security risk does, but I think number one, uh, Heart to Heart and Song Sensation are going to be the main battlers here. Let's go to Reporting Star. Wasn't my top selection, but almost went with this horse. At the end of the day, I did go elsewhere. Um, look, I have nothing bad to say about this horse. I bet this horse at Gulfstream Park in the past, in which this horse won me money through the window and, and got me in position in tournaments. Um, runs bang up race after bang up race specifically at this turf course. Um, so really nothing bad to say. I just thought might be up against it from a pace standpoint. Uh, give us your thoughts on reporting star. Yeah. And this actually be my price play here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to hit the exact Nicole and maybe hit all on the uh, third slot for the try. Really intrigued by this one, Bob. Like you said, I, I've had, uh, had some luck with this horse in the past here. This one's coming out of a much tougher company in my opinion. Um, you know, grade two and grade three. If you look back in the Commonwealth uh, Cup, facing horses like Blacktop, Top of the Mind, the next yeah. that winner, and Force of the Past, just horses that I think are just a little better than this horse. You know, in the uh, Bernard Baruch at uh, Saratoga, 
faces Ring Weekend and Jake Gatsby. Ring Weekend's a, an amazing race for us. Absolutely. So once again, you know, uh, finding tougher. You have to go back to actually the last time this horse was at this turf course in the Appleton in April for this one's last win. And that was quite the win. This one's six times in the money at a seven starts uh, over to the Gulfstream turf course. So for reasons like that, I'm going to try to cue this one hard underneath a short price favor. Going to have a lot of work to do considering the last time this horse ran at seven and a half furlongs was on a good turf course December 12th, way back when. I think this horse likes the further distances, but again, there is talent there. And um, you know, and then last time this horse did run at this distance, did win the race by head. So obviously you can't certainly exclude this horse. I just thought there were better options out there at better prices. And in fact, I went with the horse, Andrew, that you mentioned as far as you were intrigued to see what you thought this horse was going to do. And that's the two horse security risk. I mean, first and foremost, I threw out the favorite and I started looking at connections and Shug McGahee doing Shug McGahee things, just winning consistently on dirt or turf. And he gets Johnny Velasquez the board, the Hall of Famer. Look, I'm with you in reference to the November 12th race in which this horse went to the lead and said, play catch me if you can. But do keep in mind, we're talking about the smartest betters in the country here on the Naira circuit. And they let this horse go off at 6-1. to one. So I think you could argue, yes, this horse was the best in the field. But it wasn't like this horse was facing a bunch of claimers. This horse beat some good horses, did it very impressively. And look back at the other races uh, Andrew, in which this horse has won. That in August 21st at Saratoga going a mile on the 16th, the horse did it from just off the pace. September 25th, this horse lost all chances of winning the race at the start in which he bobbled. I think you can make a big argument that this horse would be three in a row from a win standpoint if it weren't for that bad break. And I think there is versatility here. And if you look at the, the speed numbers, last time out going a mile, which really you can compare those to heart-to-hearts mile races, I don't see any reason why the two can't sit off the flank of heart to heart and get first run on the closers in which are going to try to come get the one and the two. And again, I'll go back to heart to heart. This horse is very dangerous and very good with a long lead. The further he can go on the lead by himself or itself, excuse me, the better the horse gets. I don't think that's the case today. I think the two can run with the one, and I think the two might be in better form than the one right now. And whether he is or not, you can have six to five on heart to heart. I get double digit odds on Suge McGahee and Johnny Velasquez and a horse that should be winners of three in a row. I'll roll with it all day. So again, security risk, the two at 10 to one morning line, hoping I get that price. Yeah, and a, and a very respectful pick, Bob. Obviously, anytime Shug teams up with Johnny Velasquez, especially uh, you know route to sprint, as they call it, still numbers are very high here in Formulator. And second off the layoff, you're definitely going to get a good price on this one. Um, are you sure? Do you truly believe that this one's going to stay at ten to one? Because no. morning line, I agree with, but I, I, I'm just a little afraid that they may bet this one down. Well, I mean that would be the question here, and we haven't talked about this, which is why I love doing the show with you. We just kind of fly by the seat of our pants when it comes to our thoughts. Six to one to me is still value on this horse. Do you think I get six to one? No, yeah, that's that's where I think you you if if anything, I think that's where you end up at six to one. And to be honest, if we're comparing six to one horses in the field. I would take six to one security risk over over five to one song sensational. I would take six to one security risk um, over over go around the uh, the Bill Mott horse here with with, uh, right. with, with uh, Castellano. Right. So still, I think you're gonna get a good price here. Um, so just to recap, Bob, where do you see, where do you want this horse? Obviously, my horse is going straight to the lead. That's the only way my horse can win. So do you want to chase after my horse, a proven horse that can put away others, or do you want this one to rate a little bit and make that first run, hoping my horse retires? I just want Johnny to be aggressive from the bell and then use that clock in his head that's going to get him to the Hall of Fame and decide whether or not they're going fast enough to lay off just off the one, or if they go slow, which again, we're talking about New York jockeys at this point at Gulfstream, then I think you run right with the one. It just really depends on the pace, but I absolutely want this horse first or second. I don't want this horse three, four lengths off the lead. If that's the case and the one's got a lonely lead, then you're going to be right. This horse is going to pay a short price and we'll move on. But again, really impressed by the speed, the gate speed of this two horse last time out, despite the fact he won the race, which was impressive in doing so. Just like the versatility, think this horse can get to the lead if he needs to be. And if you look at this race on paper, Andrew, from a pace perspective, 
I mean, the six is leaving himself with a lot to do. The seven, again, is going to be cutting back from mile, mile and 16th, mile and eighth races in which the horse is coming from two lengths off the lead, five lengths off the lead. You know, except there's a lot of horses in here that are going to be coming from way off of it. I think this race has got a chance to be slower than what, you know, others may believe. And I think the one and the two may just run first and second all the way around the racetrack if they're as good as I think they are. No, oh, yeah, so, you know, so let's get, uh, you know, obviously you definitely sold me here more on security risk. Like I said, I was just intrigued about what this one was going to do. So I'm with you, Bob. I like your selection, and I'll try to get them uh, underneath you with my seven reporting star. If we can make a profit off the favor. want to ask you about one more horse, and it, it's a bit of a price play. And from a connection standpoint, it, it certainly is not the, the big names that we're accustomed to. But what about the five-horse flat line? Yet again, another horse that I think is going to leave himself with a lot of work to do. But you want to talk about class. This horse loses September 24th to black type by only three and a half lengths. Consistent, well above 100 from a time form U.S. speed perspective. Lost to Coldport. Uh, you know, there, there's some class in this horse's running lines as well. And look at the workouts. I mean, I'm not saying this horse is going to win the race. Obviously, I don't believe that to be the case. But this horse may be setting on its best effort yet. December 13th at Gulfstream Park. Four furlongs in 46 and one-fifth seconds. That's four, one of 49. Five furlongs and 59. This horse is ready to run big. Your thoughts on the five? Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I definitely threw this one out here. I'm not the big, biggest Bravo guy, so um, you know, I, I tend not to look at his horses uh, too long here. But definitely some interesting workouts here now that we look at it. A 91 buyer in defeat last time out going to mile Churchill Downs. Obviously does stand out here. Um, it's just a matter of how far this one wants, you know, where this one's going to be placed. I didn't have this one on the lead regardless of workouts. I think this one gets, you know, shuffled in, in, in the mix uh, a couple lengths back. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see as soon as the bell rings. You know, we'll see where this one's going to be placed. Give us your top selection one more time. So I'm going to go with heart to heart at six to five. Should this one go below and I'm in need of chasing, I'm going to go with number seven reporting starting to one. All right. And I am on the two horse security risk. Should McGahee, Johnny Velasquez, 10 to one morning lines. That's going to do it for Gulfstream Park race eight. On Saturday, December 17th, it's the $100,000 El Prado Stakes. Andrew Calvano, I'm Bobby Shoemaker. Good luck. Good luck, guys.